Ladies and gentlemen and privateers of the seven seas of all ages, join me for a pirate's treasure hunt. Once again, it's summertime here in Southern Arizona, and I'm responsible in part to entertain the local camp kids at the Tucson Racket Club. So for the theme, I thought I would use pirates and make a number of pirate props and make sure each child had a treasure map where they could go around the local area and search for clues. This is a summary of how it went. Based on a simple map of Skull Island, I made an overlay of the actual Google satellite image of the property where the treasure hunt would be. Then I started to add different props as I moved around the different areas on the perimeter. I always try to make my themes as entertaining as possible and for children to have a little bit of education wrapped up in there too. One thing that always seems to frustrate me is when someone doesn't know Magnetic North. So the first thing I did on this treasure hunt was made a big arrow to identify North. Some of the other pirate props included Saguaro Sloop, the Saguaro Cactus, of course, holding the pirate rings, and the Sloop having a figurehead of tennis champion Maria Sharapova. For pirate ring toss, there's the large pink sword. Let's now head over to the M2 Technology Dream Factory. Here is the hook hand for SpongeBob the Pirate. The idea here is to have a well-used hook for SpongeBob slash Captain Hook. Here you'll see SpongeBob's arm, which will support the hook, and some metallic silver paint, which will also be used for the hook itself. Here is the handle for the pink sword, which will be used for the pirate ring toss. And here is the sword itself, which will be painted pink and mounted to the handle. It doesn't look like much now, but it came out nicely. I was very impressed with the overall participation and the kids were very cooperative.
Are you looking for the very finest in karaoke music entertainment? M2 Technology, Karaoke King, and Mark the Mixer will exceed your expectations in every way, guaranteed. The public school children in Southern Arizona will be going back to school this Thursday. So for a special treat, I thought I'd fulfill my entertainment obligations at the local racket club by presenting the 31st and a half Olympiad. It most certainly will prove to be more out of this world than space alien invasion and considerably more wild than the jungle event. When I was growing up in New Jersey, one of my favorite shows was the wide world of sports, which would travel the globe looking for different sporting events. In knowing how important it is to keep children active, I thought, why not bring the Olympic Games to the summer camp at the local racket club? I consider this event one of my more optimistic and a great challenge for my DJ entertainment capabilities. With that, here is the plan. First, we will establish the perimeter and add a parachute canopy. Then, establishing the fields for the events, such as the speed pitch, which will have a radar speed gun, the javelin and shot put throw with accurate measurements, speed rings, which I haven't quite established yet, the all-important massive water slide, which the kids love to slip and slide on all day to keep cool, the sack race, which will be 50 meters in circumference. And of course, it just wouldn't be summer camp without limbo. And let's not forget the all-important iconic Olympic torch with high-velocity fan which will push air up through a center tube, creating the illusion of a torch as it blows cray paper 25 feet above the ground. This is a DJ entertainment application, so the main system will be placed here, a secondary system here, with a third system in the second floor restaurant, which is also the lunchroom. These systems are tied together by a digital audio transmitter and two receivers. The weather is certain to play a factor in these Olympic Games. So in checking the local forecast, we see we will have a 103 degrees with 50% humidity on Wednesday. However, with no rain, we are good to go for the 31st and a half Olympiad. So let the games begin. I certainly have my work cut out for me. Well, it's 24 hours before the big day, and here we are at the M2 Technology Dream Factory. Okay, let's see where we are on that torch. Okay. Well, we're going to have to have some more gold paint. Thank goodness I have a paint mixer. At M2 Technology, we don't like waste. So, part of our Olympic torch is our old agitator from our old washing machine, which will also be incorporated in the Olympic Games. In accordance with No Child Left Behind, every child will get a number, and every child does win a ribbon. I'm sorry to say. However, the top three gold, silver, and bronze will win medals that are actually metal. So it'll be an interesting day. One challenge that needed to be overcome was the amount of markers for distance and to mark the lanes clearly for the javelin throw and for the shot put throw. And of course, rule one, anything relating to children, you have to try to make as safe as possible. No sharp edges and plastic and wood are preferred over steel and metal, which can have sharp edges. 
have it on the ground right now. It's going to be a lot taller. And there is the Olympic flame. It's going to be a little bigger. I have to get some more streamers. But here is the base. On a sturdy mount. And then a 2x4 that sticks up to mount the upper piece that you're looking at now. And then, of course, the power wire will be, it's a 12-volt line, will be hidden out of the way. It's about at this time where I start to ask myself, why am I going through all this trouble? Well, it's the love of the games. Well, I arrived at 6 a.m. so they could get the gate open. And we're looking pretty good, actually. I have a few minutes ahead of schedule, so I think I'm going to take a little bit of a heat break. It's already super humid. I'll tell you, SpongeBob is in awe. He has his Olympic attire on today. All right. Well, I made it. Just barely. Everything is set and ready to go. Slip and slide. Olympic Village.